Okay, good morning, family. Good you. morning. Good morning. You good morning, good morning. Thank you for being up. Good morning. Amen. Can we just lift up our voices and commit the session into the hands of the Lord this one hour? And let's pray in tongues for those who can. Amen. Then we'll get right into our teaching. At the end, we're going to partake in communion. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in our midst. Thank you, Angel Raquel, with positioning the angel of Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this week. We thank you for everything that you have laid in our hearts. We pray that even as the word comes forth, Father, it will transform the lives of each and every one of us. I believe, Lord, that none of us will live the same. We will learn something new. Today, we'll begin by building upon certain foundations and move on to the more depths um, as the week rolls by. Father, we are so grateful for the new things and the new changes that you're bringing into our lives in this season. I pray that we will be consistent so that we um, understand systematically what you want to teach us in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beloved, I'm excited. I hope you are, <laughs> even though you don't know what it is. Um, this is a Morning Dew Revival Week. The reason why uh, we decided to call it Morning Dew it's for this reason. We have a working definition of the word revival. I don't know what you think when you hear the word revival, but here we have a working definition. Amen. It's an improvement in the condition or strength of something. Revival is an improvement in the condition or strength of something. That's the dictionary.com definition. And that's the working definition that we will use during this time together. Morning Dew has been around for at least three years now. And uh, I mean, it has gone through its own challenges, the ups and downs of it, the consistency or lack thereof. So um, the Lord placed in our hearts to do this just to um, help us see the reason why it is important. We know that uh, morning dew falls within the fourth watch of the day. It's very significant. There is a reason why it falls within that time of the day. There are certain blessings indeed that can only be received during that time of the day. So we thought we should bring this back to us um, for five days in different ways and uh, help encourage you to reconsider um, your prayer hours and why this is significant. It's not just a platform activity. What we are trying to instill in us is a lifestyle that beyond the platform, you can still wake up and commit the day into the hands of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The only thing that will be slightly different from 
the regular morning dew here will be the prophetic actions that will accompany this um, to each teaching. We will start very slowly and then we will go deeper as the weeks, as the days um, unfold. Amen. So the title of this revival week uh, of morning dew is the precious things of heaven, the precious things of heaven. I have the S in bracket because we'll be talking about just one precious thing, but there are precious things of heaven. And we're going to find out what they are, but we, we will only take a look at one in this season. As we begin to teach on this, we will also reveal some prophetic actions um, to accompany um, each teaching. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33, if I may just share with us here, Deuteronomy 33 um, talks about, um, the. it says in verse 1, talks about the final blessings of Israel coming, final blessings on Israel from Moses. I'm just going to read verse one here. It says, now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. So when we read the entire chapter of Genesis of Deuteronomy chapter 33, which I'll encourage you to do so, you will see all the blessings that Moses blessed the children of Israel before he died. Amen. So it is within this particular chapter that we are going to go in to discover the precious things of heaven, which of the children received this particular blessing upon his life. Amen. And why? And why is it so significant? So I'm going to read to us Deuteronomy 33, verse 1 and verse 13 through 16. These were the blessings that Moses placed upon Joseph. Amen. The blessings that he blessed Joseph with. Verse 1 says, now this is the blessing which, with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Verse 13, and of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord is his land with the precious things of heaven, with the dew and the deep lying beneath. 14, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months. 15, with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the precious things of the everlasting hills, with the precious things of the earth and its fullness, and the favor of him who dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come on the head of Joseph and in the crown of the head of him who was separate, who was separate from his brothers. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. as blessed Joseph, he began to pronounce the blessings of the precious things. Amen. He talked about the precious things of heaven and he called, he named them. Number one, the dew was one of the blessings. So Moses blessed Joseph with the blessing of the dew. He blessed him with the blessing of the sea. He says, and the deep lying beneath. He blessed him with the blessings of the fruits, the precious fruits of the moon. He blessed of the sun. He blessed him with the precious produce of the months. The word months, there's actually the word moon. So he blessed him with the blessing of the sun, the blessing of the moon, the blessings of the ancient mountains, um, the blessings of the everlasting hills. And he also blessed him with the blessings of the earth and its fullness. When we take a closer look at the blessings of Joseph, we realize that his blessing, his blessings were, um, I'll, I'll use the word restricted very loosely to natural to nature, because dew has to deal with nature, the sea has to deal with nature, sun, moon has to deal with nature, um, mountains, hills, earth. It has to deal with nature. It means that when we take a look at all of these things. There are blessings in them, but we need to find out from the Lord where those blessings, how those blessings can be transferred from this natural element into our lives. Amen. 
Now, the reason I'm saying this is because um, it's very important that we begin to shift our mindsets to, um, uh, to embrace what the Lord is saying through nature. Like we have understood that he can speak through the wind in, with every element upon the earth, fire, earth, sun, moon, the heavens, the clouds, the rains, the Lord speaks through all of those means. Amen. Now, remember when our sister uh, Christine was ministering yesterday and she talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and she spoke of how well the, the scripture blessed her. I just want to bring our attention to that particular verse in order to uh, communicate that which we have for you today. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 only, it says this. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Beloved, we know it as um, spiritual gifts. We know it as the gifts of the spirit. However, the word here, spiritual gifts, is actually the word spiritual Gifts was just an English word which was added to help our human minds comprehend. It wasn't spiritual gifts. And let's take a look at that. And I'm doing this for a reason, to help us. When we take a look at, for those who use BibleUp.com, um, I just want to help us see what the original meaning, if this will download. Paul, the Apostle Paul was saying that when it comes to spiritual spirituals, not spiritual gifts, when it comes to spirituals, I do not want you to be ignorant. Quite often when you read your Bible and uh, you see that a word is in, is, has been italicized, know that for the most part, that word was added by the English writer. It wasn't the original word present um, in the Greek or Hebrew translation. So the Apostle Paul was saying that concerning spirituals, I don't want you to be ignorant, amen. And that's what we are doing because our lives are very spiritual and we need to live um, with that consciousness daily, knowing that the Lord is using everything around us to speak. Now here is the word that the um, the Apostle Paul was talking about, when you click on the original meaning here, it says nomaticos, concerning spiritual, amen. That's exactly what he was saying. Concerning spiritual or concerning the spirituals, I do not want you to be ignorant. The Lord desires that we should be spiritual. We realize that those who don't call themselves Christians are more spiritual than Christians themselves. And it's because we have restricted ourselves to be Christians. The Lord did not call us Christians. He never made us to be Christians. We are kingdom citizens. We are disciples. But because we wear the heart of Christianity, then we have restricted ourselves to embrace the spiritual lifestyle that should have accompanied being a Christian in the first place. Amen. Yeah. Now, that being said, the goal of this morning due revival is to help us become spiritual beings, not necessarily Christians. Amen. Amen. I think the result of Christianity is not working. Amen. So let's move a step further and be disciples who are spiritual in their ways. We know that life is spiritual and indeed it is, and we should not be ignorant about it. Amen. Amen. Now when we look at the um the the words here the precious precious fruits precious produce all the word precious it is the word here meged is the word excellence it's the word excellence in other words moses was blessing joseph with excellent blessings amen, amen. excellent blessings I believe we will all love to be in a position to receive excellence or excellent blessings. Amen. Amen. I, I went a step further to look at the meaning of the word excellence from different dictionary. It says excellence. It says the quality of being excellent, an excellent or valuable quality or excellency. It also says that excellence means greatness, the very best. In other words, Joseph was receiving the very best of blessings from Moses. 
Excellence is the fact or state of excelling. It's a state or fact of superiority and eminence. Amen. Those were the kinds of blessings that Moses was placing upon the life of Joseph and his bloodline. Amen. That is the kind of blessing I want to receive. And I believe that is the kind of blessing that you would like to receive as well. Now, Amen. having that in mind, we are going to be talking about the dew, which is one of the blessings that was placed upon Joseph. In other words, the precious things, that's verse 13, with the precious things of heaven, with the dew, in other words, the dew, which only comes about a certain time of every day, because at noon you will not find the dew. It's only found during this time of the day, maybe from 3 a.m. when temperatures have dropped all the way to maybe 6 a.m. and it begins to dry out as the sun rises. So it means that there is a blessing in the dew. However, dew is made of water. So what is that blessing in the dew? We are going to discover what that blessing is. Because if Moses could bless Joseph with the blessing of the dew, it means that there is a reason why we should keep the morning dew. Not as a program, but as a lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Or morning dew, because it wouldn't come out at, um, I mean, it wouldn't come up at uh, 12 noon or 9 a.m. in that sense. Amen. Now let's move forward. Now, where do we stand as a family? If you frequently visit our YouTube page, we have our vision statement clearly stated there. Growth, excellence, prevail. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we are a ministry that is passionate about the growth of individuals, not for selfish gain, but for your generation and your bloodline. While we have desired and continue to desire that we grow, we want to move to a place of excellence. Amen? A place of excellence, to be in the very best with the information that we receive. Amen? To be great in the, in the information, to function as great men and women in the information that we receive. Often, we will continue to receive even deeper things as the weeks unfold. But in a, while receiving those informations, we pray that we will be excellent in our approach because a time will be required where we ought to prevail, meaning function with in victory. Amen. So morning dew is an attempt for us to excel, function with excellence. Amen. Now I want to speak to Amen. us about the morning dew. Amen. Okay. Now we have already seen that there was a blessing placed upon Joseph by Moses. Now, have you asked yourself as we are talking that could it be that the dew is a blessing? Could it be that the dew is a generational blessing? What is it within this dew that you know we need to pay attention to? Amen. Now, mm -hmm. as I was studying the Bible, I took a look at um, Genesis 27, verse 28. Here it says, this is the blessing that uh, was being um, placed upon um, Jacob from Isaac. Amen. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, because this dew only comes from heaven. There's no other place it can come from. That's why it's precious. It's excellent. May God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. As I began to take a look at this, I realized that the blessing of the dew in this family seemed to be generational. Mm -hmm. It came from Isaac to Jacob. Then Moses, in his own time, blessed Joseph, who was an offspring of Jacob. Because jo Jacob had received the blessing of the dew. So if you and I finally understand and receive the blessing of the dew, you have done your generation much good, evidenced by scripture. Isaac blessed Jacob with the blessing of the dew. And Moses, in his time as a prophet, blessed, released the blessing of the dew onto, into the life of 
um, Joseph. Amen. Amen. Now, let's do hear the word. I'm using a lot of translations here. The Greek word there is a word tal, and the English is night mist or dew. Night mist or dew. So it's actually the dew. Amen. It's a night Amen. mist. Now, some of the questions that I want us to continue to ponder on is, is dew a blessing? Does the dew carry blessings from God to us? Yes, no, we'll find out. What time of the day is the dew seen? What is the content of dew? Of course, we know it's water. But beyond physical water, we are spiritual beings. When you touch that water, when you see that water, what are you looking at? What are you touching? Amen. Where does it come from? Who writes on the contents of dew? Why is the dew important? Which message does the dew carry? What is the dew communicating to us? What is it communicating to us? Because it certainly carries a message for us men. Now, the fourth watch, like we know, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., we have talked about the watches in depth. We have asked that we practice them. So we should be able to re remind ourselves real quickly about each watch and what um, is required of us. Now, here's what happens during the fourth watch. I'm going to give us some nature's study. Amen. The cold wind of the fourth watch is what causes the dew to be collected. The cold wind condenses the cloud, which leads to rain, snow, and you name it. Amen. Now, let's understand how the dew water formation comes about. Now, these are all Google excerpts because I want us to begin with the nature and then get into the spirituals. Let's talk about the condensation process. I'll read very slowly so that we understand. Dew water formation occurs through the process of condensation. We know, it, we, we know about evaporation, water to air, and then air back to water. <clears throat> During the day, the sun heats the air, causing water to evaporate from various sources such as rivers, lakes. Now the evaporated water turns into water vapor and mixes with air, creating humidity. I believe we have all experienced a humid day. It's as a result of this process. Now we talk about the humidity and the temperature. Now as evening approaches, temperatures drop and the air loses its ability to hold as much water vapor. Amen. Because the water has evaporated there's so much in the air. But as temperatures drop, the air loses its ability to hold that quantity. Higher humidity levels lead to more moisture in the air, which increases the likelihood of dew formation when temperatures drop. Now, when the temperature of an object, such as a plant's leaf, or a car window falls below the dew point, the excess water vapor in the air condenses into water, water droplets on the surface of the object. Now, this is how dew forms in the natural. Amen. Amen. Nature study right there. Now, understanding the correlation between air, dew, heat, sun, and humidity is essential for efficient dew collection by leveraging the natural processes of condensation and temperature fluctuations. Individuals can harvest and make use of this valuable water source. In certain parts of the world, like I was studying, I realized that some people depend on that morning dew for their drinking water. You know, they are out during the day with a during the early hours of the morning with their towel, they place it upon surfaces and then they wring their towel into buckets because they depend on that for their water supply. How wonderful the Lord is where he can bring water from heaven to us, you know, to, to, to places where they don't have natural sources of water. Amen. Amen. Like, and the divine providence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, we're going to go a bit further. Let's go to Genesis 
chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, and verse 6 to 8. The Bible says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Verse 6 through 8, Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky and evening passed and morning came, marking the second day. So on the second day, we see what was happening. The point of this particular part of explanation is to help us understand where this water is coming from and why in the first place. When we look at the accounts of creation, the understanding that we get from this picture is that the entire world was like a bubble of water, a like body of water. The whole world was water, was a water body. Evidenced by what verse six tells us, God, it came a time the Lord said, let there be a space between the waters because he had to create space. Otherwise we'll be floating in water like fishes. Amen. So mm. he decided to create that space, divided the waters of the heavens from the waters on the earth. I want you to picture that in your minds. Imagine that scenario. You have a body of water and then now you bring about division in order to create space in between. Then the waters beneath the earth became the seas, rivers, ponds, you know, all the other water bodies that we see upon the earth. Have you ever asked yourself that where did the water above go to? Because it went somewhere. It is somewhere. Amen. When mm -hmm. that took place, the water above remained above, meaning there is water in heaven. Amen. There is water in heaven. And then there is water upon the earth. Yeah. And it collaborates. The water in heaven collaborates with the water upon the earth. Amen. When in the in the account of creation, no one has ever heard that God said, let us create water. Has never happened. Because water already existed, did not need to be created. Amen. It only needed to be separated in order to create room for humanity to breathe. Amen. Amen. That, that separation took place. So when we see the rain falling and the dew coming, it's coming from heaven. And the precious things of heaven, the dew, amen. That water that comes from above is excellent. It's from heaven, amen. amen. Now, before God separated the heavens and earth, they were both merged by water. Water already existed from creation. At no point was it recorded that God created water. It is typically known that water comes from the clouds in the sky. We know that, Lingo. The spirit and the water have a great relationship. Amen. Because mm -hmm. when I, we heard how Sister Bernard talked about this, but I want to throw light to it today. Amen. We are told that the spirit hovered upon the waters here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So in that body of water, before separation took place and space created for humanity, the spirit hovered upon the waters. So even when separation took place, the spirit did not stop hovering over earthly water and heavenly water. Are we beginning to see? Yeah. So every time we hold water, there is a spirit hovering over it. It had been that way from creation, has never changed. It doesn't matter where the water comes from. Because Satan cannot create water. No witch can create water. They all met it and they're all using it. But the Spirit is hovering over this water. Amen. Amen. Now, hovered is the Hebrew word rachav, which means relax in English. In other words, the Spirit feels comfortable with 
water. So what was happening here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 is that the spirit was feeling comfortable to relax upon water. So at any given time you hold water, I want you to remember that the spirit is relaxing upon that water, is hovering over the water, and that is how it has always been and will continue to be. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go a bit deeper. Let's look at this again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Remember we said there is water in heaven. But how is that? We saw the division. But let's go into the language. In the beginning, God created the heavens. The word there is shamayim, and the earth is erect. Now, the Hebrew word here for sky or heavens is the word shamayim. Now, Hebrew tradition tells us that this word is a, const is a construct of the Hebrew words esh, fire, and mayim, water. So in other words, when you're reading this statement, in the beginning, God created the shamayim, fire, water. Amen? Sha, meaning fire, mayim, meaning water. And the dominant factor here is the fire. So fiery waters. Amen. So as much as we say heaven and earth, I want you to know that that heaven and earth that we talk about is fiery waters. Amen. Fiery mm. waters. So God created the fiery waters and the earth. Amen. Because there is water in heaven. Amen. Okay. Mm. Now mm. the earth, which is a red, was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirits, meaning the ruach, meaning the breath, the wind, the spirit of God was hovering, relaxing over the mayim. Remember shemayim, mayim means water, was hovering over water, the mayim. The spirit there is talking about the wind. Our sister was testifying and saying how, where, where the water goes, where the wind goes, the water goes. Yes, because the spirit there is talking about the wind, the air, the breath. Amen. So where the wind blows, the water will go. That is why wind, air feels comfortable with water because they, they just collaborate easily, even in the physical. Amen. Amen. Something that was established from creation, it is what is now, even by science. Amen. Air and water work well together. They Amen. In the same direction. Okay, so in the beginning, God created the fiery waters and the earth. And now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the wind of God was hovering over the waters. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're just laying foundations for today. Now, here is... I want to tell us what our prophetic action of the day will be and may it become a lifestyle. We are told that in the beginning, law of first mention, fiery waters existed. And like we have read the entire scripture, the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So when we look at the first two verses of the Bible that we have, um, we see that water is being mentioned, not only in the book of Genesis, but the first two verses of Genesis, we see water being mentioned. Amen. Now, when we go to the very end of the Bible, which is Revelations 22, you have Genesis and you have Revelations. It says, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Do we see that? Water is flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. What does that tell us? When the earth began, when the Lord began creation, he divided the water. Some water went up, some stayed down. So what this person is saying here is not just something that we need to imagine and think, okay, well, um, it's symbolic. It's actually true. Because there is water in heaven. Amen. The angel mm -hmm. showed him the river of water of life. As clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Flowing from the throne of God. Because there is water 
at the throne of God. Amen. It is that water flowed down the middle of the great street of the city on each side of the rivers to the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree and are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Here is the point. If the water from heaven can cause these beautiful things to happen, could it be that the dew too can cause this to happen for us? Mm. Just a few thoughts. Because this water comes from heaven. Dew comes from heaven. So could it be that this water that is flowing that um John was the apostle John was telling us about, could it be? that this is what the Jew can equally do for us. Just think about it, amen, and share your thoughts. Now, what is going to be our first prophetic act? Very simple, but it's very spiritual, because I want us to start seeing life very spiritual. Daily, daily, practice drinking water first thing in the morning and last thing before going to bed. Simple, no strain. Why? God begins and ends with water. He began mm. in, with water. He ended in revelations with water. So you may think drinking water first thing in the morning and last thing at night is, well, that's what um, Dr. Bobby Price said. All your dietitians and people who are conscious about health, your doctor is saying. But life is spiritual. Before it became science, it was spiritual. That's why water is the best source of liquid for humanity. Amen. But you will drink now with wisdom. First thing in the morning, just have a bottle of water beside your bed. First thing in the morning, drink water. Why? In the beginning, God created the fiery waters. And then you go to verse 2. After verse 1, it says the spirit was hovering, was relaxing upon the water. So this day I partake of water upon which the spirit of God hovers and you drink it. Amen. Before mm -hmm. going to bed, you remind yourself of what John the Revelator was shown. You tell yourself that that river of water flowing like crystal from the heaven, the throne of God is what I partake of. And you begin to declare this upon your life. Why are you drinking first thing and last thing? Very simple. God started with water. God ended with water. And water is an excellent thing. Water is a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so here is our scripture for communion as you get your communion elements ready. First John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. These three are one. Revelations 22 verse 1. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now look at this. Seeing Jesus in scripture, there are three that bear witness. The Father, the, 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 the word Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. For those who attend the pillars, you know, we're very keen in identifying you know, Jesus in scripture and just pulling out certain truths. Now, when you come to Revelations 22 verse 1, you still see the three. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. Water of life? As clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Why is it this three? Because upon this water is the Holy Spirit. Do we see? The spirits hovering upon the waters. They will always bear witness, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The water of life with the Spirit upon it, they have God and the Lamb. Amen. 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 May we grab our coming elements, beloved. Amen. The Lord Amen. has revealed everything that is keeping us from him. He has put a tear through every veil, rather, that is keeping us from him. A tear through every veil. The veil of ignorance is being torn today. Amen. 
ignorance, ignorance has been torn today. Remember, not means veil. So as we speak in communion today, I want us to purposefully detach ourselves from the lots of our lives. Amen. Touch yourself. The Lord has put a tear through the veil, through lots, and you to separate you. Amen. 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 Keep that separation in the name of Jesus and Amen. be free to live for Him. Be free to live for, for Him. Be free to live a spiritual life. Amen. Be free from ignorance. Begin Amen. to see nature differently because there is excellence in nature. There are excellent things that the Lord wants to communicate and bless us with from nature. We need to embrace it as simple as water. Hence, you. Beloved, I pray in the name of Jesus that the truths you're receiving will not be mere information. May it come to revive you, strengthen you, change your approach towards God, towards spiritual things. That you will not function from a place of eye service, but you will do it because you have a knowing. You have an understanding of what you are doing. You have a confidence of who the Lord is and what he has revealed to you as a person in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you carry out your prophetic acts of drinking first thing of the day and last thing of the day, you begin to expand. Experience the spirit hovering upon the waters as you consume it within you. You're also consuming the spirit of the Amen. 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 Out of my belly shall flow rivers where does the water come from? The spirits and the water walk together. Let's just sing together. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of out of the river, river, let it flow, let it flow, let it for as the river flows, it begins to see everything to life. Is the life giving river? Oh, let it flow like out of our belly shall flow rivers of Out of our belly shall flow rivers rivers let it flow, let it flow. 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 Oh, let it flow. For oh, as the river flows, the river flows. Bring every dead thing to life. Bring up everything that I give you. Oh, let it go right here. Right now. Oh, let it go right here. Right now. 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 Right
river of water flowing with what the river of water of life and out of your bed you shall flow with rivers of living water because of the water that flows is a symbol of the spirit of released upon the people in the name of Jesus. You consume water with a consciousness because out of your belly where the water went will flow rivers of water and that water is the spirit upon the lives of the people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Amen. Free that us. The water of life God the Father and the Lamb the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me break bread together. Okay. Amen. You can take one or two feedbacks and we'll call all of the day. Okay. Any feedbacks? Any comments before we go? We just have um, four minutes to spare. Amen. Thank you, Mama Miguel, for this teaching. This is so powerful. And uh, I thank the Lord for this season where he's teaching us about the spirituals. And uh, it's so practical and it's uh, very understandable. I have, I have understood it and I'm going to really, really work on it. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Any last thoughts before we go off the line? I would just like to encourage everyone for those who live in apartments, maybe you have a balcony in the evening, you may just want to get a clean bowl to put out there. So that when you wake up in the morning, there will be dew in the bowl. And you can use that bowl, you know, if you want to make it the first source of water. If it's drinking, you want to drink that. It doesn't matter how much. If everybody just gets a touch of it, that would be something. Then if you have a home, I mean, so within your own alcohol, um, maybe a deck or something within your own space. You can just put a clean bowl at night and then in the morning you have clean dew that does not have, you know, the dust from days before. Just a suggestion. Thank you so much for the for the word. I hope we put this into practice. Amen. 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 The other day, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. There is a there is a man um that deals with um natural things and he do DIYs, um, you know. And one of the things that he talked about was to get water out of the air, right? And he made that a box and he put a, a mesh like cloth to filter the water that was going to come. And he said that if there's no water, they shut off the water um, for a while, you can still get water. And that was really good. And then the other thing with the water is it comes as a cleansing. As Dr. Mildred was saying, drink it at in the morning and also the last thing at night. And it really does work because I keep a thing of water by my bed. And that's the first thing I do in the morning. I drink water. And then the last thing I do is drinking water. And it really does um, 
come as a, a cleansing and, and um realignment of your body as well. Amen. Amen. So that was really good. I, I appreciate the teaching this morning. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. May we share our greetings. May the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and abide with us now and forever. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Therefore, all the days of our lives, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, family, and see you tomorrow, same time. Amen. Amen. Thank you.